Hello guys, after a long time I decided to continue with the 3D tutorials and this time we start with a very simple one. This time we use the cloth simulation to animate some squishy balls inside a plastic wrapper and let them move freely. Sit tight and follow me, let's get started. We start by adding a sphere. We want to put the all small spheres inside our big sphere. We will use the particle system to generate small balls. The big sphere is limiting the viewport and doesn't let see inside it. We need to set the viewport display mode for the specific sphere to wire. The method we use is using the particle system and we limit the number of the particles to 18. Also we need to set the end frame to 1 so the all particles will be visible at the first frame. The other value we need to change is the source. We need to put the spheres inside our big sphere, not on the sphere. We set the source to volume and set the distribution to random. Now everything is set we need to change the particles from the default ones to real objects. So we add in a cosphere. Make sure you keep the number of subdivisions for the mentioned sphere is set to a low number as we have 18 spheres and also, they are going to interact with a big sphere. Finally set render as to object and select the acosphere. So instead of the default particles we will use the acosphere we have added a moment ago. We need to scale up the particles as we want bigger balls. Also, I changed some other values to randomize the placement of the small spheres. We are good to go. Let's separate the small spheres and get ready for the second step. We remove the unnecessary objects. Also we need to make sure the spheres are not intersecting with each other. So we need to adjust their position manually. We have 18 spheres, there are two methods to make them squishy. One is using the soft body modifier and the second method is the cloth modifier. The soft body is so slow, so we will move forward with the cloth modifier. We have selected the all spheres and joined them. So we have a unified object and we add the cloth modifier to it. Before we add the required forces to move the spheres around, we need to draw their path and find the best solution. We want the spheres move like these. We need to add a vortex force in the middle to rotate the spheres. Also we need to add two turbulence forces on the sides to let the spheres spin. For the fourth force field we need to learn something. But before we add the fourth force, 
Let's play the animation and see how it works. But before do that, let's disable the gravity for the cloth modifier. As you can see something is happening but not that much visible. Let's add the fourth field and then change the strength of the each force. Among the forces we have in Blender, many of them are only working for particles or they affect the particles not real objects. The fourth field will take care of the position of the spheres and make sure they are not shooting out far from the middle of our scene. So now we only have the harmonic field and also the force itself. Harmonic will allow us to adjust a distance for the spheres to move around while we take care of their position. It's time to adjust the forces. For the turbulence, we use increase the strength and also, we need to crank up the noise value. Also, we use... Vortex makes it possible spheres spin. We use a low value for this force, but we also use noise to make it more realistic. I forgot but you need to adjust the size for the turbulence forces. Use a lower value for the harmonic field strength but keep in mind to set the dampening to zero and the rest length to one to let particles get away a bit from the center. As you can see the particles are being shot out far. Let's adjust the forces value and finalize this part. When something like this happens you can have doubts about some values. First is the size of the turbulence and also its strength. The other thing is the rest length of the harmonic force. We will adjust them one by one to see which one will fix the issue. We increased the vortex strength to let the spheres spin more. Then we fixed the collision issues between the spheres. If you are interested to duplicate the original animation you have seen first, you can follow me on Patreon and download the Blender file. Also, the second part of this tutorial is available only on my Patreon. Let's fix the collision issue. As you can see we have some collisions between the spheres as the cloth doesn't know how to behave the self-collision. We simply need to enable the self-collision of the cloth modifier to solve this. Things looks better now but we still don't get our desired deformation when the spheres self-collide with each other. We use a default preset, we start with the rubber preset and see how it behaves. But we also need to enable pressure and set it to 1. It creates a soft body style. Let's add a subdivision modifier to make the spheres smooth. Set the subdivision level to 2, and enable shade smooth. I had to make a cut as my attempts to find the desired values took more than 10 minutes. Let's check the values I have used for the cloth modifier. I have set the all dampening values to 10, but we increase it again. Dampening will drain out the energy of our object to get back to its original shape.
The last part will be dedicated to how set up our main cloth simulation. For that we need to add a sphere. We can either use a cos sphere or enable the extra mesh plugin in preferences and add a cubic sphere. Also, we can add a cube, assign it a subdivision modifier and increase the subdivision level. The higher number you use for the subdivision level, the more realistic effect and wrinkles you get but keep that in mind. Increasing subdivisions is equal to a longer simulation. We add a cloth modifier to the sphere in question to let it move. Decrease the value of the gravity to a number below 0.1 because we don't want the gravity affects our sphere that much. Also you need to enable the self-collision. For now we don't change any value. For this particular effect, we have two types of effects. One is a collection of the forces we use to move the small spheres. So I put them inside a collection as you can see and also, you need to go to the cloth modifier of the small balls and limit the forces to the mentioned collection. For the main cloth, I have added two forces, one is the turbulence and the other one is vortex. The both are in the middle and these forces will drive the big sphere. So we again need to put them inside a collection as I did and limit the cloth simulation for the big sphere to our new collection. I just show the values I have used for them and you can use in your own version. Finally we need to play the animation. Before we do so to see how the initial version looks, let's add a collision modifier to both objects. One must be added to the small spheres and one needs to be added to the big one. The one we use for the big sphere must be able to do the collision for both sides of the sphere. So disable the single sided inside the collision modifier. Let's play the animation and see how it looks. As you can see we get nice wrinkles but it's not enough for this simulation. We need to decrease some values inside the cloth modifier for the big sphere. I have used these values. Keep that in mind you need to increase the quality steps to 7 and vertex mass to 1 kilograms. Regarding the tension, I have used 5 as the value as I don't want the cloth get stretched when it falls down because of the gravity. It gives a shape like this. Remember to set the friction for the self-collision to one or even a low number. By doing this, the pieces of the cloth can easily slide over each other. I have baked the animation with the values we used. Let's see the final look.
Thanks for watching this tutorial. The second part will be available to my friends on Patreon who follow me there. Also you can duplicate.